heaven. Hello and welcome to Who is Best, the show where I look at and take games to give you choices and rank those choices in a tier list. I love job systems. It gives the players such a sense of control and customization to be like, hey you, be a pirate. Nah, how about a sexy vampire? No, let's go with a ninja. And that leads us straight into the main appeal of Bravely Default. Default took the job system straight from the Final Fantasy series and gave it its own twist. Today, we'll be examining the 25 jobs available through your playthrough. Now you unlock jobs by defeating certain bosses. Like many other titles, jobs are locked behind the mid and late game progression, making them less accessible. That will be taken into consideration, but overall we're looking at what is best in the end game. We have a big list here, so I'll be running through these pretty quick. Oh, and be sure to stick around till the end where we'll reveal the optimal team as well as a bonus list. We'll start with the shit here. If you enjoy spending massive amounts of MP and watching the same 30 second animations over and over and over again in order to do okayish AoE damage, then the summoner is just right for you. The Conjurer is one of the final classes you will obtain in default and by then it'll be hard to find a place for it. Its main gimmick is buffing the user which is nice and can be useful at times but ultimately there just won't be a situation where you'll need this job. The Low Tier The Templar is a downgraded knight. It's obtained later, it trades most of its best skills and abilities for lesser skills and abilities. Yes, its damage output is nice, but the knight will always be the better choice. The Swordmaster's counter ability and decent stats kept it out of the sh tier. But ultimately, the Swordmaster's uses are limited compared to other jobs and overall it comes out being underwhelming. In the late game, you'll find that your magic base classes will struggle. The Arcanist, as a late game magic base class, will feel this change the most, as enemies' magic defense and resistance will counter most useful skills the Arcanist possesses. If the Arcanist didn't have the ability Status Ailment Amp, it might have landed on the shit tier. The final member of the low tier is the Thief. The Thief's speed and early game availability make it a viable class, but just barely. Unfortunately, its main gimmick of stealing items is very situational, and in the mid and late game, this job's usefulness plummets. Alright, we're going to split the mid tier up into two groups, so we'll start with the lower mid tier. First is the Black Mage. The Black Mage is one of the strongest early game classes you'll get. The only issue here is that physical damage classes take the cake in the late game, so magic based classes like the Black Mage will fall off towards the end. The Spell Fencer is a solid class that outpaces the Black Mage, but its greatest weakness is that the Vampire class is simply better. Spell Fencer is acquired in the mid game and during that time it is a top tier class, but once you get the end game classes it will easily be replaced. The Valkyrie is a difficult class. I placed it on the mid tier to meet in the middle. If you build a jump team with speed skills then you have a top tier class. This strategy requires some setup and BP, but if done right, it's a viable strategy. Anything else though, and this class is pretty terrible. For a large portion of this game, the White Mage will be one of your best options as a healer. That is, if you want a job healing you. Unfortunately, the healing the White Mage provides can be substituted by items, since it's really not all that powerful. If anything, its support ability Angelic Ward places this job in the mid tier. High agility and a top tier weapon type in bows makes the ranger a strong early and mid game DPS. One of its downfalls though is that it's not very strong against human type enemies and lacks any support ability. As is true in most Final Fantasies, the red mage is a solid choice for the mid game, but falls off a cliff in the late game. The red mage's support abilities like turntables and BP recovery are what saved it from the low tier. The Upper Mid Tier The Knight's Dual Shield Vengeance and Supercharged Tank build makes this early game class a job you can actually take into the end game. Sure, its late game usefulness is limited, but at least it's there. The Pirate can be a great physical class, but its major advantage is as a debuffer. Debuffing enemy stats like speed and defense while dealing decent damage makes this class extremely viable. The Merchant class is absolute garbage in the early and mid game, but spikes in usefulness in the late game. Low Leverage and BP Drink are both top tier abilities that make the Merchant an end game candidate.
All right, let's move into the top tier. Though the Vampire is one of the last jobs you will get and is difficult to acquire, its versatility cannot be ignored. The Vampire can ignore defense, do high single or multi-target damage, debuff and buff all at the same time, and even has some of the better passive abilities in the game. The Monk could be considered one of the best classes in Bravely Default. Knuckle Lore will carry you into the late game and its late game build that include Phoenix Flight or Natural Talent make it a prime choice for your end game build. The Ninja is the second best DPS class in Bravely Default. Utsu Semi absolutely devastates bosses. Unfortunately, it lacks any support abilities and has an issue with tanky enemies, keeping it from the god tier. The Time Mage is nearly useless until you've acquired all of its spells. At that point though, it becomes one of the best support mages in the game. Haste and Re-Raise, if done right with Group Cast, can turn your team into a blender of unkillable damage. In the early game, the Freelancer can be useful with abilities like Examine and Endure. It's only after you max out all your jobs that you get Mimic. Mimic turns this job into the single best job in the game, as it can be anything. But of course that takes a lot of work and grinding. The Salve Maker is one of your best choices for a versatile all-around support job. It can heal even if silenced and can buff and debuff better than anyone else. The God Tier The Performer is the second best support unit and single best BP battery in the game. With top tier speed and the ability to abuse my hero, this class can easily take your team into the end game and beyond. The Dark Knight is the single best damage dealer in Bravely Default. Rage is your best damage ability and if spammed can take out any late game enemy in only a few turns. On top of that you have AoE options and a tanking skill in Bloodblade. The only downside here is that the job is gained in the late game. The final member of the god tier and top of this list is Spirit Master. Stillness is the most broken ability in Bravely Default and there's just no contest. Its support skills like BP Recovery, Defensive Support, and Holy One just continue to break the game, making this class simply broken. Now as for best endgame party, you'll generally want a team setup that has one healer, one BP generator, and two DPS. A team that includes a Spirit Master White Mage hybrid, Performer, Ninja and Monk hybrid, Dark Knight or Monk just by itself is going to be your best options. And that's our list. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and thank you to all my Patreon members. Bonus Round Top 10 Best Dress for the Job Go! Number 10, The Performer Number 9, The Knight Number 8, The Pirate Number 7, The Merchant Number 6, The Valkyrie Number 5, The Thief Number 4, The Ninja Number 3, The Vampire Number two, the Dark Knight. And number one, the Spellfencer.